Partly, they're a little awestruck by the celebrity of you guys. So, you know, I know, I know it's not, I know it's, you guys, you guys don't feel like your breath yet, but to them you are. Okay, to, them you are. to us, to us you are. All right, so, so stand out here out of the shadows. And so, so, so Tim, uh, why don't we just, why don't we start, first of all, uh, some of the challenges in computer graphics, uh, I think, I think the audience would love to hear about. Uh, your reaction to G-Sync when you first saw it. Um, what, what do you think of, are the implications of G-Sync, um, you know, now that, now that it's available? What do you think is going to happen to the future of gaming? So, so those type of, kind of questions. It's really nice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the really interesting thing here is that it's one of the, the smoothness of graphics in games. It's one of those things that's not recognized in benchmarks, but it's critically important to the player's experience. Um, and you think gives all games an opportunity to achieve that. You know, previously you had to work immensely hard and make a lot of sacrifices to gain content to hit a steady 60 frames a second. But with you think you can hit any reasonable frame rate um, and potentially get the same level of movements and graphics. Um, it's one of those magical moments to play a game like that and to see it on screen. It's completely free of artifacts. You know, it's like using an iPhone for the first time, just having this very seamless experience. You can't recognize instantly what's happening that makes it so nice, but you can see that it has forms of the previous experience. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What do you think is going to happen to game, as a game developer when you have technology like this? How would you think about it differently? It really frees up the, the game developers to make much more immersive experiences without the sort of sacrifices that we have to make in the previous generation. You know, if you were aiming at a steady 60 frames a second in the last generation, mm -hmm you would have to absolutely assure that every single frame hits that target. Um, whereas with g you have a lot more wiggle room on each side because you have this kind of continuum of uh, performance anywhere between 30 to hundreds of frames a second um, where the game will continue to operate smoothly and uh, deliver a great experience without artifacts. That's cool. Yohan, know, what do you think? Tell us, tell us your feelings about G-Sync and, and, um, and as you think about G-Sync, uh, what, is, what are the implications to the future of gaming, and how would you develop games differently? It's pretty awesome. <laughs> uh, it, it, it's really, it, it changes the, the perception quite a bit, and that, I was fully surprised by that. When you actually see it in, in action, which, which people here will, will do, is that you, the best possible experience you can get before a game is if you're running 100 FPS in a game, uh, typically without the music that people do. That, that's sort of what we're used to I mean, in, in the best possible type of experience, but with this, well, you don't, it's it changes the actual well, perception of, of, of the picture. You see a continuous stream of something that the mind actually interprets as a moving picture. And, and I really don't like that. I was surprised by how my mind actually interpreted the information. And when we tried it out and, and just had more and more people in, in our studio just testing it, everyone just came up with the same experience. That's, that's really quite amazing. What do you think is going to happen to game development if this becomes widespread technology? I think one thing that has not really been reflected in, in games, uh, Tim was into a little bit of, 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 we design games for a certain specific budget, but games nowadays are not really the games you played 15 years ago or even 10 years ago or 5 years ago. Games now are these massive experiences of very different types of environments that you have in your game. And sometimes you have a, a cutscene and sometimes you have a giant star field that you're traveling through and sometimes you have massive amounts of explosions and it's essentially impossible to design a game for a fixed frame rate uh, today. Uh, and you don't even want to, you have to make massive compromises in, in all areas. Uh, even if we, if we think our overall game runs at 60 FPS, we have to run rather around 14 milliseconds, perhaps, to leave a little bit of a budget for things that we can't really predict in our environments. And with this, well, we don't really need to do it in the same way. Sure, you probably don't want to jump too much in frame rate, uh, but if, if the storytelling and the actual game experiences uh, uh, are adapted for it, it and with this technology, it's actually much easier to create the games that you actually want, the experiences you want, and, and, and still get a, a really good picture out of it that the mind interprets in a very nice way. That's really cool. Well, it's, you know, there are, so, there are so few people who are as fanatical about displays as John. And, and the reason for that is because he's putting them awfully close to his eyes these days. And, and uh, when he saw it, he, he wanted to come out and share with, share his opinion with you guys and his, his first reaction with you guys. John, what do you think? What do you think is going to happen? So, you know, for years, the 
PC space has had a willful blind spot to the artifacts of tearing and junker, where we can talk and try to get people excited about these relatively subtle effects like gamma correction and you know subsurface scattering and some of these things that we can spend tons of gigaflops on and kind of point out and squint and say this is really important while blinding, you know, covering our eyes over this huge tear line racing up and down the screen. You know, this really fairly egregious artifact. And yeah, I've been a lot more sensitive about this for a long time. You know, we did make the, the decision to make those compromises on our last title to be 60 frames per second, which meant that we did have this 15, 20% cushion that we had to be there to make sure that we wouldn't uh, exceed that, that we would only very rarely uh, wind up missing that, which meant that for any given amount of processing power that we targeted for, maybe 20% or more, in many cases a lot more, was just left completely unused because we were at the maximum frame rate. We were at 60 frames per second, and that was important for the smoothness that it gave us, but we had to make a lot of compromises to make that happen. And being able to, to use all the graphics power that you've got, to unlock it from 60, to open up towards the higher frame rates, and to be able to make it a smooth continuum there, rather than dropping from 60 down to 30 in one huge lurch, or suffering the stuttering, or suffering the tearing, it's just a better experience. And almost every single game can benefit from this, where being able to go over 60 frames per second winds up bringing in additional benefits, and once we start crossing some of the magic numbers above like 90, 95, heading towards 120, and we start enabling the low persistence mode, and some of these things add additional benefits that you haven't even seen here today. So I mean, the, the G-Sync technology involves not just the variable refresh, but also some of the low persistence modes, which will have additional benefits as games start moving towards those higher frame rates. But the only way we're gonna get games towards those higher frame rates is by having this smooth incremental path. I mean, yeah, we could ship an old game remade like Doom 3 BFG that could run at 120 frames per second, but the only way you're gonna start seeing absolute modern AAA titles is if they can creep up and have 60, then 70, then somebody's got a reason to put in some crazy dual SNLI system that's gonna go ahead and spend another $500 on the video cards, but oh my god, it runs this at 120 frames per second low persistence, that's going to be awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So you know what we're gonna do here is this. I know, I know you guys, um, I, I know I do. Just wanna sit back, put these three guys up here, and just blast questions out. Isn't that right, would you, would you agree with that? Okay, and so here's what we're gonna do. Um, I, I've got so many questions for these guys. Uh, let's do this, let's, let the, let's finish. We have one more announcement to make, and um, uh, right after that, we'll have these guys come back, and we'll sit down. Is, is that the game plan? My boss is sure, right? Okay, that's the game plan.